Okay, this is a strength of materials problem. And here we have a steel plate, which is uh, 12 millimeters thick. And it has two shoulder fillets, as we can see here at point B and point C. And we also are given uh, an allowable stress for it, which is 150 megapascals. And they are asking us to find the axial force, considering the fillets. And they are asking us to find the elongation due to this axial force. And in this section they want us to ignore the fillets. So, let's take a look at how can we find the axial force. Well, we are talking about stress, and that is axial stress. So we can use this formula, sigma equals force over area. And we also have stress concentration, because we have these two fillets. And therefore we're going to use this formula as well. So this uh, stress allowable that we are given, it's going to be this one right here. The maximum stress that will be allowed in this material. The stress at critical area, that will be the stress in the thinnest area, which is right here. Or here, same thing. The K, uh, which is the stress concentration factor, we can calculate it from the shape of this material, this rod, since we have all its dimensions given. We're going to combine these two formulas and therefore we can find our F. Okay, there's my stress con concentration formula. The stress maximum will be our stress allowable. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for it. So stress max will be equal to K times the stress at the critical area. Now, this critical stress, we're going to break it up with our axial stress formula. So I'm going to make stress max equal K times uh, our force, which is marked with P over here. So I'm going to put P over area. Now, from here, I can go ahead and solve for my P, since that's what we are looking for. And P will be equal to the maximum stress times the area divided by k. All right, now I have a formula for finding my p. Stress maximum we have, area in the critical area we have, which will be in this area, the uh, thinner area. And k, we can find it, which we're going to do right now. And in order to find it, we're going to rely on these two. And then we're going to look up K in a chart. So let's find R over D and R over lowercase d will be equal to our R is the radius which is given here. We can leave this uh, calculations in millimeters. It doesn't matter. We 30 millimeters over the lowercase d which is 60 millimeters and this will be equal to 0 0.5 now our second one uppercase d over lowercase d the lowercase d is the right here the distance of the thickness or the height of the shorter area the uppercase d is right here the thickness or the height of the larger area. So uppercase D over lowercase D is, uh, this one is given 120 over 60, which will give us a nice number too. And from these two, we're gonna go ahead and find K in a chart. Okay, here it is. Uh, we got R over D for 0.5. So 
there's the point 0.5 for the r over d. Uh, big d over little d is right here, 2, just like we found it. So that's going to be this arc. And from the intersection of the two, we're going to find our k, which is 1.4. 1 1.4. 1 .4. And with this, now we have everything that we need in this formula right here. So all we have to do is plug in and find our P. All right, here it is. I have plugged everything in. This is uh, my stress max. These two represent the area. And re remember, this is the critical area. Because over here, we, we had the critical stress, which we broke up into this one, P over A. So this is the critical area. Plugged in ev everything in, and with a calculator we can find 77,142.9 newtons. Or we can go ahead and round it up and have a 77.1 kilo newtons. There you go, we found part A. Now in part B, they want us to find the elongation due to this axial force and they want us to ignore the fillets. So what we're gonna have here then is gonna be this middle section which is uh, the thickness or the width of D and then we're gonna have two smaller sections right here with uh, width of little d. So we're gonna use this formula the deformation due to an axial force. Delta due to the force equals force times length over E times A. All right, let's uh, get to work. I'm going to mark on our drawing the areas that we are working with, just so we can understand it better. So this will be area one, this will be area two, and this will be area three. So section one of the rod, section two, section three. We're gonna break up our formula based on these three. So my total elongation of this rod will be elongation in section one plus elongation in section two plus elongation in section three. So all I'm gonna do now is plug in this formula for every single one of these elongations. Okay, here one by one I plugged in, and as we can see, uh, the P and the E is the same for all three sections. So we can make our life easier and factor it out. P over E, and over here we can either write the sum of the L over A's, or we can simply L1 over A1 plus L2 over A2 plus L3 over A3. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the values that we have. I've plugged in the force over Young's modulus, 77,142.9 newtons, what we found right here. Young's modulus was given, 200 gigapascals. And in the parentheses, I'm going to plug in the values for uh, my first area which the length is, we have it given, 200 millimeters. So I'm going to put 200, 10 to the negative 3 meters, divided by the area of section 1. So that's going to be 60, 10 to the negative 3, times the thickness, which is 12, also was given, negative 3, and we have meter square. Okay, now section 2. 800 millimeters. The length, 10 to the negative 3 meters. Alright, the area is 120 times 10 to the negative 3. And thickness, the same thickness, 12, 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. And this one, well, we can write it again, 
but section 3 is the same as section 1, so we could have just simply put another 2 in front of here, but I wrote it out just so we can understand it better. Since it's the same, we could just multiply this by 2 and problem solved. But I'm going to write it here separate, just so we can see it nicely broken out by section. And area also the same. 10 to the negative 3 times 12 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. Okay, this is section 1, section 2, section 3. Nicely corresponding to our rod. And now we have everything. All we have to do is plug it into the calculator. Plug it into a calculator and find the value that we need. And this will give us a total value of 0 0.429 millimeters.